So I guess what I am not for the geese, but I do understand some for the geese. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, I uh, work for a coach uh, service design, and I will uh, guide you tonight uh, through this agenda. First, I will do a brief introduction about uh, the Blue Coast and uh, what, what we do. And then I talk a bit about uh, customer, customer journeys and uh, give an example how we see uh, customer journeys and how we also apply uh, experience design on those customer journeys and how you can uh, innovate your, uh, your customer journey. And then we do an exercise, uh, we do it in, in small groups. If you see the group like this, I think we can make about five groups of four persons. So it will be nice, so there will be a lot of interaction. Um, then uh, we will present and pitch uh, the little ideas that we get out of the, of the workshop and then in the end we have a little discussion in the wrap-up. Um, yeah, first let's see, uh, is there something special that you expect from, from this meetup uh, tonight? Sorry? Okay, yeah, that's an hour, so yeah, I can give you a good time. Or maybe someone else can. <laughs> so, okay, that's, uh, that's about it, what you want to do. Okay, so that's, I think, uh, easy for me. Uh, it gives you a good time. Um, I'm kind of squeezed here, but anyway, uh, uh, this is our team uh, back in Amsterdam, and exactly that's me. Uh, I'm the one who's uh, starting up and uh, running the office here in, uh, in Lisbon. For the time being, I'm just for myself, uh, but uh, from next year on, I will um, uh, contract someone. Um, we have a bunch of different clients that we work for, I don't want to go into, into them. Uh, but how we see service design, actually, we see it's a difference between just uh, the commodity, for example, uh, the coffee beans. Later on, the coffee beans were more the, the packs of coffee that you have on the shelf in, in the supermarkets. But Nespresso really made the whole service out of it. Uh, made the service out of a simple commodity uh, like coffee by having the Nespresso club, having the on the shops, having the, the, yeah, the, the plants, they, they exactly know when it's your birthday, so they give you an extra present. So all those small things, actually it's a whole uh, service uh, that they created out of a simple commodity. And it's not just a service, it's the whole design around it that they, uh, that they made. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, some, some terms that you see here, it's pretty, yeah, pretty hot topic. Uh, we have to change, we, we need to be agile, uh, we need to, to change fast. Uh, and that's also what uh, what Dorian said, uh, that it's not uh, about the strongest, but it's about the ones who can adapt and are able to change. And that's also what we think, uh, which is important for the for organizations. Uh, so that's what we try to apply for, for organizations as well, to be able to, to change. I think the colors are a bit uh, straight. Okay, it should be blue. So anyway, it's like this, no problem. Uh, so this is what we do, uh, because we try to design a meaningful services and uh, help organizations to become more customer-centric. And uh, some principles of service design, uh, in general, uh, I think service design is always important to be user focused. It's important to have a holistic view, uh, to it's more problem to, to understand everything uh, that's happening. Procreation is important. We'll see what's inside. We we go and, and work together. Uh, from service to commercial, actually, it starts uh, it starts with service from the side that clients can see and then. You have to build into organizations and companies that usually go to, into the core. And of course, uh, we need to be more iterative, so it's small uh, steps and small changes in order to, uh, yeah, to grow and to, to change uh, easily. Um, we apply uh, basically the design thinking process, uh, but then only uh, apply to, to services. Uh, I think most of you will be familiar with the uh, with design thinking uh, uh, approach. So first, uh, empathize and create some empathy with uh, with your users and, and with your uh, end clients. And then uh, define a sort of strategy. Uh, create ideas for this uh, this strategy. Uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, as soon as possible, try to to start making prototypes and uh, test those prototypes again with uh, with the users. It can be internal users. Uh, 
uh, external users, but for someone who you design it for, you should uh, try and test it. Um, so why uh, customer experience is actually important uh, at all? It is important to uh, make sure uh, that your customers are really uh, willing to pay. Um, if uh, if it's not good in your customer experience, people don't want to pay anymore for your service. Uh, retention is cheaper than, than just doing the marketing, so you can better have uh, loyal clients instead of uh, investing a bunch of money uh, in the marketing departments. Um, the band experience is uh, spread fast. I think we all know the, the examples from American Airlines uh, uh, with some issues with passengers that were taken out of the, of the airplane. Yeah, you see how it spreads really fast via social media, how the whole value of a, of a company is. Yeah, it's losing 10-15% uh, within one or two days just due to social media and that experience of one customer. <laughs> yeah, and if it's not good, people go elsewhere. I can imagine that this uh, guy that is, uh, was taking off the flight and will never go again with uh, American Airlines. <laughs> then there's this uh, problem that a lot of companies think uh, that they offer the right services and they have the right proposal for their clients. But if you really go and ask them to the clients on the street, are you satisfied with the product that with, uh, with the offer from the, yeah, from the organization uh, that you that you got? Then uh, there's a huge gap. Uh, and that's uh, something we, we try to work in to find out uh, where is this gap and what is the space where we can uh, create new ideas and, and new services. Um, some examples where uh, yeah, new companies uh, took over or changed the whole market. Uh, for example, Amazon uh, actually yeah, they took over the whole film uh, industry uh, in the beginning. It was not because the, the, the guys who were renting out the movies. Uh, yeah. They didn't uh, change uh, on time. And then the startup uh, by then uh, was growing really fast. Same, uh, same comes with Netflix, of course. Uh, Airbnb, I think it's uh, also a uh, yeah, pretty uh, obvious example of the hotel uh, industry. Uh, yeah, not able to, to change fast enough. Airbnb saw also a new market and it really started a radical change and sort of a fight with the weekly hotel uh, industry. And also, if uh, companies invest in, in design, uh, here is a, it's a list in, of some companies who really invested in, in design and they compared it with the results uh, with more traditional companies and then you see that over, uh, that over 10 years uh, they really uh, outperformed the more traditional uh, companies. Uh, so what we do at Coast, we, do, uh, we offer uh, help to do uh, innovation product, uh, projects and improve your services and we also do business transformations to really uh, change the way of working within your company. Um, I think enough said uh, about Coast uh, and about how we work and a little bit about our market. Uh, let's uh, focus more on the uh, yeah, customer journeys and that's related to, to the exercise and really experience design. So how can people experience uh, a certain service or certain uh, product? If there are questions, by the way, just uh, raise your hand and yeah, don't hesitate to, to, to interrupt me. Yeah. yeah, so let's see. Um, a customer journey, we can say it uh, nicely in some basic words. Okay, it's a highly versatile and uh, engaging tool uh, to map by a customer interact with the, with the service, but it's easier to, uh, to, to map it like this. Uh, you have a customer and an organization, and actually a customer never can touch an organization. It's something intangible, because the organization is offering a service, so the, the customer is not interacting directly with, uh, with the organization. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, the interaction that is taking place on all those little dots uh, where the customer is having the interaction with the organization. All those smart points uh, 
after one after each other, uh, they form actually the, the customer journey. And the customer journey defines the customer experience. So uh, those points are connected, but at some point the customer can be more satisfied than, than other points. And this whole uh, orchestra of points and, and experiences um, create in, in general the whole experience and the whole idea that customers will have about a uh, certain brand. Um, I will show an, an example of uh, the IKEA. Yeah? My point is a bit strange. Um, there we go, the IKEA. And who hasn't been to the, to the IKEA? Well, some non visitors Okay, so. But uh, I think people will recognize it. Um, this is already. Uh, yeah. It's one of the first touch points that you can have with the IKEA. It's just a simple bus stop. A slightly different uh, advertisement that they, that they make because there's this little IKEA sofa in it. Um, of course, IKEA has this uh, touch point, yeah, the traditional magazine. Uh, I think you can find it in a lot of households still nowadays. Physical magazine where you can compare it and dream about your new, uh, your new furniture. Of course, uh, everyone, every now and then, has the, those huge uh, billboards next to the road, and you think, hey, IKEA, yeah, maybe you should buy this extra baby uh, or this extra closet. Um, and then, if you really go there to the IKEA, you always know, okay, this huge, iconic uh, blue box, blue yellow box, it's always IKEA. And then, if you enter, it's uh, yeah, one main entrance, and you have uh, one way. To find uh, yeah, the route within the IKEA, they already thought about everything. So all those little touch points, they yeah, they give you a certain feeling. At some moments you're more happy, at some moments you are uh, less happy, and that all together uh, forms a, a nice customer journey. They know exactly where they need to place the, the shopping carts. So at the beginning, you start uh, first having a look at all furniture and. The different rooms and how you can decorate the rooms, and there's always a room that you think, oh wow, this is really my style. I wanna, I wanna buy this for my house. So then you feel, uh, yeah, you, you get excited about it. And they always have extra products that they even don't, don't sell, but just to yeah, create a whole complex how you can use the products uh, that the, uh, that IKEA is, uh, is selling. So for example, you see the television, but they they don't sell television. So uh, you always have the, at some point uh, contact with the staff or maybe the unfriendly staff. It's uh, that depends on the mood today, of course. <laughs> and then in the end of your uh, journey through the, the IKEA, uh, yeah, the, the hassle starts in the warehouse where you need to find your own furniture. And you think, oh no, shit, guys, uh, where do we need to go? Did it write it down? So it's always a uh, kind of a set. Sad point in the, in the whole journey. And then maybe it gets even worse if you have to wait for, for one queue to, to do the checkout. So that's even maybe another dip in the, in the experience. But I can't find the solution. Just a simple pressing <coughs> hot and, and a, a, little, um, a little soda. And it makes you happy. And they even make money on it, of course. Even though it's 50 cents, they make money on it. And you as a customer, you leave and you, you will be happy. So that's how you can see how uh, companies and organizations are sometimes playing with, uh, yeah, with those experiences that you have when you are uh, entering and making use of, uh, of a certain service. Then after the happy holiday, uh, the next problem is yeah, try to, to fit everything in the car, of course. Um, and then at home you have to, uh, to fight with the menu and uh, yeah, actually the real uh, relation test uh, starts. Uh, can you together uh, set up uh, the furniture? And of course, yeah, you, need to, you need to use it uh, in the end. So this all together you can, yeah, you can see and already think of the different ups and downs in, in the whole uh, journey that you have with, with the IKEA. So from the moment on, even before you're in the shop, you already start interacting with the IKEA, uh, with the 
with the advertisements that you have next to the road, maybe with a little magazine at home. So this all together forms the, uh, the whole customer journey. Um, one of the important things for, from a customer journey is also that you have to think of several phases, and the phases are not uh, every time when you're really using the, the product. For example, it's not only when you're inside the IKEA, but it's before and it's also afterwards when you've gone home, when you need to build your new furniture, and then the greatest thing is you use your furniture. So, why a customer journey? Actually, you can you can use it for, for multiple uh, things. Uh, you can use it to define a strategy, you can use it to find out where uh, where customers interact with uh, certain other brands. Uh, so I'll give, uh, I'll give some examples of, uh, of some customer journeys. Uh, I think um, you all have seen uh, several customer journeys, maybe you use it uh, in, on your daily work. Um, otherwise you can uh, find uh, several uh, here on, uh, on this link. Be shared afterwards. But customer journeys will appear in all different uh, sizes and, and shapes, and, and they have uh, different, um, yeah, uh, how do you say, uh, objectives uh, to use them. For example, this slide and uh, the next slide. It's basically the same customer journey, but uh, with another purpose. Here it's a customer journey made uh, to understand what steps. Uh, users are uh, taking in a process. This was for an uh, insurance company and they wanted to see what's happening when uh, people are uh, changing houses. Uh, what <coughs> points of interaction do we have? When are they thinking about certain uh, moments and what are the decision uh, moments uh, within the whole journey? So they, were, uh, they have uh, several steps. And for each step, uh, later on, they added here uh, an extra layer to see um, when the people are changing houses or moving houses, um, what kind of uh, interactions and other uh, brands uh, the, the customers are using. So in the end, in the beginning, when you start um, just thinking about oh, maybe we should move, uh, you you go to Pinterest, um, you get your ideas, you, you get inspired. Um, then you start really orientating, so you go to uh, and then it's and you, you will say, I think they are Vista, or I don't know, those kind of sites to, to really see. Um, but at some point uh, here, when you start entering your house, you will go more go to the do it yourself shops like uh, Aki. Um, so for the different moments, you, you interact with uh, different other brands. And for this insurance company, they used it as a tool to see where they uh, could have uh, could found uh, their clients and interact with them on, on the right moments. Because if they start uh, making advertisements, maybe on websites for, for the do-it-yourself markets, or maybe within the do-it-yourself markets, they know that people are thinking about uh, making their home for them and make it more comfortable, and that they already moved or they. Or in between uh, the move. They have this space, they still are anything and they don't have a, have a next to a new house. So that's uh, interesting to, to see how you can uh, uh, use a, a customer journey map on, on multiple uh, ways. This is a slide where uh, all the gray circle, circles are missing. <laughs> so sorry for that. Um, so we can also use. Um, yeah, a customer journey and make an overview of all customer journeys that a company has. So, uh, multiple uh, circles should be circled within here, also one here, uh, to see the diff different layers how, uh, of the life cycle actually of, of, of all customers. So, you have, for example, the I use, that can be daily use for a telco provider. You have the I manage, okay, you, you manage, that's maybe what you do every month. Every now and then you, you manage your data plan, for example. Then you really uh, come in, let's say, the, the loyalty uh, loop. So really, you become an ambassador of, uh, of the whole brand. And then you have a sort of a, an overlay which uh, could be uh, the customer service or the I need help uh, journeys that will be uh, 
it will be in there. You can even uh, apply extra, uh, yeah, if you have the, the data statistics, you can uh, put it and define, okay, which customer journeys are most important for, for our company and where should we improve uh, first, where, where can we get the, the quick wins. Um, you can also make the, the journeys a bit. Yeah, also you can, yeah, you can make uh, customer journeys as visible, visual as possible. Whatever you want, so there's a lot uh, that you can do with uh, customer journeys. Um, so now we know everything about the customer journeys. Uh, other questions is that maybe someone wants to yeah, share some, some thoughts on it, uh, how you apply it in, in your work. Can you ask that again? Uh, how you uh, apply and how you work with customer journeys on a day to day basis. Maybe not at all, I don't know. No? I want to make an uh, unrelated yeah. question. Sure. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have examples for, for the use of uh, customer journeys uh, besides uh, for profit, like for hospitals or something like that? So, not no, for profit. For non-profit organizations, yeah. services which are not for profit, because this, most of this uh, is related to marketing. Yeah, it's just we 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 gotta work on a case which is a non-profit non organization. Yeah, basically. So no, no, um, we have worked for hospitals in, in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, we we designed the, the waiting rooms for hospitals, so we made also the the journeys. Okay, how. Patients and training who's uh, participating, actually, yeah, who makes use of the whole waiting rooms. Uh, but I have to say, the Netherlands hospitals nowadays are also commercial hospitals. But the, the point was not uh, was not a commercial point involved in the whole project. It was really to uh, to get the best experience uh, out of the new uh, waiting rooms. Yeah, because the, the, what I see is that most of the, most of the, the examples. Uh, can come across uh, for maximizing profits. Yeah, uh, it's just that because it's not really, this is something that's not user centered, but it's customer centered. That's a user plus the business. Mm -hmm. And what, what we always do, we always start from the user side. So for us, the user is the most important, and we try to identify a game. Yeah. And how can you make it better for your user, and in the end, the return will be there for, for your business. Um, and that's something that we that we always say to to our clients, like okay, you should listen to, to your customers and understand what they want, um, instead of only just forcing them into into your yeah. services. So I, I see your point, but we haven't worked a lot with uh, yeah, non profits, and not as far as I know. And just just one more yeah. question. Uh, when you see uh, the line between uh, branding and service, because you, for instance, you start with an example, the difference between coffee and espresso. Yes, yeah. it's a brand, right? Yeah. It's not just a, it's not just a, a service for which you design the journey. Yeah. But it's a, a brand. Where do you see that line? I. I think branding is more about really the, only the identity of, uh, of the whole brand and what we see in the service design is only the parts of the, the interaction. So it's more more than, than branding. You can say branding is a part of it, uh, but we we are not really focusing on branding or rebranding of, of a company. We are focusing on improving the, the service that the company is, is offering and improving the the interaction between the customer and the company. But you do have a uh a say if, if you need uh, to change something related to the brand or something like that. If you notice, we, that sometimes we, we notice, but it's not what we, uh, we are all, what our focus is. What, one more question. Let me question. It's an add on of the same. My experience and probably it helps you on your questions as well. I've been, I've been using these designs as a very journey and as you are presenting to us. In two different 
areas. One is learning, which is becoming quite powerful in offering service, learning services to organizations. And also within the health system, where there are so many projects regarding how to really improve our service and, and stepping out of the patient focus for a service focus. And it's quite helpful to do this. Yes. Okay, uh, let's continue. I will show some, some examples which are more um, small examples on how you can innovate your, uh, your customer journey. Um, so yeah, how to innovate your, uh, your customer journey and uh, the experience of the, of the journey. Um, so basically, you know, what's uh, experience design? Um, yeah, you can also back to, to your question. Uh, so the experience curve is actually formed by the by the client. That's how they how they feel uh, and how they experience the, the service. Uh, you have an organization and they try to put in some experience drivers. So what kind of feeling do they want to give uh, with their service? Um, and yeah, that together you you form a, a value proposition. Uh, so you can actually uh, create the line that I uh, talked about before. Um, so, uh, yeah, there will be uh, several phases in, uh, in the journey. Uh, actually, the first phase is uh, the before stage, so before you really start using a uh, service. And you always have to see for, for someone a server start when you think about, uh, think about the brand, or think about an organization. For someone, the server starts when you really enter, for example, in this, uh, the, in this example, the IKEA. And also, it's the same in the end. Uh, when does it end? If you leave the company, if you uh, leave, really disconnect with the brand, uh, if you leave the shop. Uh, so that's the, um, the balance that you, that you need to find. Uh, so I'll show you some, some examples on how uh, yeah, companies, some examples, I think everyone will know. Uh, Innovated their customer journeys. Um, let's start with Netflix. Uh, everyone knows Netflix, and you always have those the peak in the end. Okay, wow, I saw this episode. It was really nice. Uh, but they even increase this uh, this peak, the, yeah, uh, to to deliver directly a whole season of episodes on one day. So yeah, they actually uh, created this binge watching uh, binge watching story. So you yeah, have better peaks. Uh, how you can increase your peaks, you can also um, yeah, improve your uh, thought, thoughts. Um, this is, uh, for example, in the hospital, maybe it doesn't look like it, but, uh, but it is. It's to make a CAT scan for uh, little children. Uh, they always have problems in you know, putting the kids in there, because they thought, ah oh, man, that's scary, I don't want to go there. So it took an average almost twice as long as an adult in going through the scan. So uh, they thought, how can we make it better? And let's make it a nice experience for those kids. So they made it a real nice experience, and now it's uh, almost the same time uh, that it takes when an adult's going there, uh, is, uh, when kids uh, go uh, through the, the scanner. And this is also an, uh, an example from, uh, from Cat, uh, a Caterpillar uh, for maintenance of big engines. Uh, you have the maintenance guys, and it's Go there every now and then just to do maintenance on the, the, the emergency power supplies, for example, for hospitals. Uh, but since they know the whole route there, they just go there to the basement and they do the maintenance. And then the hospital uh, is receiving this, uh, this invoice. Okay, uh, we did your uh, maintenance. But they never saw, they never had any interaction with, uh, with the guys who did the maintenance. So uh, what we said is actually, just go there and uh, say hi if there's no one, and then put the door hanging there. It's just a simple thing, but it's the moment of truth because for the hospital, it's important that the uh, power supply for emergencies is working and then it's uh, maintained correctly. But they never had any interaction, they never saw someone passing by to do the maintenance. So that's, uh, yeah, you can focus on the, on the moment of, uh, of truth. Um, Starting strong with, uh, with an experience, it's always good because it's uh, it's important to have a good uh, interaction with your uh, with your brand. This is a bank in, in the Netherlands, a uh, totally digital bank. Uh, you don't have any physical branches, <coughs> and you open your uh, bank accounts within five minutes. 
just not making a selfie, making a photo of your hands. They pretend to do a sort of a scan of your hand. I think it's only a marketing trick, but uh, it's really simple and easy and fun to uh, create your bank account. And that way, you really start to have a nice uh, connection with, uh, you know, with the brand, with the organization. As you can start strong, you also should end strong, of course. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, this was for a car leasing company, so what they did uh, is normally okay. You lease a car, and when you go there and pick it up, it's just hey, here, you have the keys, uh, uh, have fun with your car. And uh, we said maybe it's nice to really make it a little party because it's the moment of truth. It's really your car, and you start having your car. Uh, so make it a little party. Uh, yes, here we are. Uh, you can also. Extending the journey, that's what, uh, what Disneyland uh, did in, in the US. Uh, they discovered that families had a lot of hassle with the kids and all the luggage and then take the airplane and go to, to Disneyland. So they thought, hey, maybe uh, luggage service is a good solution. So what they did is they pick up your luggage uh, at home and they make sure that the luggage won't be in the hotel by the time that you arrive at the hotel as well. So on the, on the journey to the theme park, you, yeah, you don't have any, yeah, any thing, thing on with the, with the luggage, you can just focus on your kids and family, uh, which is already complicated enough. Um, which also is a smart move, is uh, skipping phases and, and activities. Uh, I think everyone here knows Uber or used Uber. Uh, so what they did was um, skipping the whole phase of, of the payment. I think um, that most of you also had it. When you take a traditional cab, you leave and that's oh, it has to pay. Yeah, this payment phase, they just skip it. It's really smart and uh, it's always a hassle for both the driver because he's stopping in the middle of the ground and he needs to wait for the, for the payment and also for the passenger because he needs to find his, uh, the money and wait for change. So that's smart. Uh, the same uh, reordering um, phases. So at uh, the moment uh, when you really decide to, to buy, for example, uh, your glasses. Um, it's difficult to decide on the right moment in the, in the shop which glasses are, are the best for you. Because you want to, uh, yeah, uh, how do you say, you want to discuss it with your family, you want to show it to your new colleagues, to your friends. So what this uh, company did is like, okay, we offer you five glasses and then you send uh, back uh, four of them. Uh, within four weeks, so in four weeks' time to just experiment uh, those glasses and see which one is the, is the best. Um, intelligent uh, experiences, I think uh, nowadays a lot is uh, pretty intelligent, uh, especially those uh, yeah, streaming services, they always know how to encourage you to continue listening, continue watching, come up with, uh, with the right uh, recommendations for you. So that's, uh, yeah. Pretty smart. Or we can just uh, redesign everything, of course. Uh, that's even easier. Uh, or not. But you have all the, all the freedom. Uh, that's how the BB, of course, uh, started uh, some years ago. Um, how do you know? Yeah, how can an, an organization understand their customers, but they also want to add some, some identity from, from the from the organization itself, because otherwise it will be all uh, the same. Uh, for example, the customer journey of a flight, it's, uh, it's the same if you go from, uh, from here to Amsterdam with the uh, guy there or with the uh, top. It's the same customer journey, but the whole experience is way different. Uh, it's not the same, you have to do the check in, you get this. Uh, yeah, the sandwich, which is not nice to, to eat, and the top is uh, is more premium. So that's how you uh, how do you want to identify yourself as a brand. Uh, therefore, we uh, we call it experience drivers some experience that you really want to give uh, with your uh, with your service and and that you should attach. This is from a project that we've done with uh, NOS uh, here in Portugal. Um, 
some experienced drivers that they wanted to, to use with my K, we want to fill in control, and it should be effortless. Uh, we want to impress sometimes our customers. Uh, it should be confident and uh, yeah, people want to feel uh, or need to feel appreciated. Uh, if you bring the experienced drivers and the experienced curve together, you get this uh, yeah, the value proposition. And it is important because for uh, several segments, uh, moments of truth uh, can be different. And also the experience drives uh, will be different for, for each moment. If you have a look here at the um, example, um, yeah, this is a simplified journey uh, from, from Russian on how you use the yeah. mobile phone. Um, but if you have prepaid services, uh, the moment of truth, which is most important, it's the, the check phase. And as you can see, this was the, uh, the control. It is important uh, when someone is a prepaid user that uh, this person, when he's uh, putting credits, that he directly knows that the credits are there. Well, for a business user, it is important to inform on the right way uh, because uh, most likely it's the financial department or the administration which is receiving the invoice and he doesn't know anything about uh, the colleague who is using this, uh, this, uh, this phone. So here you can play a little bit with, okay, where are the moments of truth for uh, several uh, segments that, uh, that you have within, within your organization or business. And also the experienced drivers, they, uh, they are more important or less important uh, along the, the customer journey. Uh, that's what we're going to work on tonight. A little bit. Uh, we're going to do an uh, exercise on yeah, designing a new experience. Uh, so we're going to do some action. Uh, maybe first, if there are more questions, or if there's no time for questions. No? Okay. We continue directly to uh, do some action. Uh, we're going to design the experience for uh, the theme park. Uh, so that will be uh, fun. I already uh, started a bit because we don't have time to make a complete uh, customer journey, of course. So uh, I have here uh, a really basic customer journey that you're going to use, and you're going to pick uh, one point of the customer journey, and you're going to improve it, uh, the experience around that uh, certain point of the, uh, of the journey. Uh, there will be a group of work, um, I think groups of four will be fine. Um, and we uh, have to uh, choose an uh, experienced driver, of course, because each group will have his, uh, his own team park, and your team park will be, yeah, will have some, some special value. So one team park will be really connected, but the other team park will be uh, surprised. So everything is, uh, yeah, we should, should have surprises in, in the interactions. It could be really relaxed or luxurious. And, so that's up to, to the groups uh, what, you, uh, what experience driver you, uh, you pick. Um, so this is what, we, uh, what we're going to do. Uh, first, we have a look at the, uh, the journey. I, I have a long paper here, so don't worry. Uh, uh, first, uh, have a look at the, the journey and discuss it together with, uh, with your group. Uh, then choose an uh, experience driver, uh, either here as well. And from that, uh, start first on um, brainstorming. So, okay, uh, what are uh, more painful points? Uh, what's the whole context around the little points that, uh, that you pick? For example, the, the entrance of the, of the theme park. Uh, after the brainstorm, uh, we pick the, the, the nicest ideas and we start filling in the, the idea sheets. And uh, in the end, we will do some little pitches uh, yeah, for, for everyone to, to see what are, what are the outcomes. Uh, that's it, uh, what we're going to do. So, I will say, uh, not let's race. Uh, action. <laughs>